This is the state funeral given for Hossein Hamedani, a revolutionary guard general who was killed on October 7th in Syria by rebel groups who oppose the Bashar Assad regime. Since the start of the Syrian uprising in 2011, and following Iran's military interventions to save the Assad regime, hundreds of Iranian guards, including high-ranking commanders, have been killed in the Syrian civil war. However, Hossein Hamedani is the most senior officer to be killed in Syria. After his death, the supreme leader visited his family in their home to show Hamedani respect and to demonstrate the importance of his military service for safeguarding the Iranian regime. Hamedani was a ranking guards commander since the early years of the 1978 revolution. He commanded the paramilitary Basiji forces that brutally suppressed student protests in 1999, and he also crushed the popular uprising that followed the 2009 presidential elections. Since 2011, Hamedani has been subjected to international sanctions for violating human rights. Recently, Hamedani has played a pivotal role in developing the Iranian regime's military strategy in Syria, designed to prevent the collapse of the Assad regime. His four-year-long activities in Syria shed light on the scope of the Iranian regime's military presence in Syria and show how this has changed the nature of the Syrian civil war. In March 2011, in the midst of the Arab Spring, the Syrian people rose up against the Bashar Assad regime. The regime's security forces reacted brutally, using deadly force to crush the uprising. In response to the government's violent crackdown, large numbers of Syrians took up arms and joined the Syrian Free Army. By late 2011, the anti-regime forces were on the brink of toppling the Bashar Assad regime. Hamedani has explained this early stage of the Syrian crisis in an interview given in April 2015 to an Iranian journalist. In the beginning, the Syrian government's reaction to the peaceful demonstrators was harsh and this created a new series of problems. Unlike Iran that has the Basiji and other police forces to deal with popular unrests, Assad did not possess such an appropriate force and was forced to use the army. Hamedani also described Assad's dire situation in 2011 when the Syrian Free Army was able to mobilize large numbers of people hoping to topple the regime. When I was sent to Syria in 2011, the Syrian Free Army had mobilized 110,000 fighters and the anti-regime forces controlled nearly 80% of Syria. They had launched an attack on Damascus and had reached the presidential palace. During that time, everyone, even the Russians, left, and we were the only force that remained to support Assad. At this point, the Iranian leaders decided to intervene massively in order to prevent the collapse of Assad's regime. Ismail Kosari, a former Revolutionary Guard general, currently head of the Defense Committee in the Iranian Parliament, told the Fars News Agency in January 2014 about the Iranian Supreme Leader's decision to prevent the collapse of Assad. A few months ago, a group of us from the parliament went to Lebanon and met with Hassan Nazrullah, the leader of Hezbollah. He told us that in late 2011, they felt that everything was over and that the Assad regime was close to its end. A group of us from Hezbollah, together with several Iranian officials, met with the supreme leader of Iran and asked him to revise his policy towards Syria. The supreme leader listened to us, then said, you should plan a wise strategy and do your duty. Be sure that Assad will remain in power. The Iranian military strategy to support the Assad regime, carried out by the Revolutionary Guards Quds Force, employs several military groups. Up to 8,000 Hezbollah fighters, supported by Iran, have been deployed in Syria 
and so far more than a thousand of them have been killed. A Quds force has mobilized its Iraqi Shiite militia proxies and has sent thousands of fighters to Syria. Iran also masterminded the creation of the Syrian National Defense Forces NDF, a paramilitary force comprised of paid volunteers similar to the Basiji force in Iran. As the Iranian press has been reporting in recent days, Khamedani played the leading role in creating and organizing the NDF in Syria. In this interview on the Iranian state TV, General Mohammad Ali Jafari, chief commander of the Revolutionary Guards, explained Hamedani's role in Syria. چه ویژگی داره شما که در اونجا میتونست بهترین کاندید باشه برای نظم دادن و نسق دادن به اوضاع آشفته سوریه؟ صدر حمدانی با توجه به مسئولیت هایی که هم در دوران دفاع مقدس هم پس از جنگ در سپاه چه در سازماندهی بسیج آماده کردن نیروهای مردمی در مسائل مقابله با ناامنی های قبل از جنگ در کردستان و غرب کشور در مسائل شهری و مشکلاتی که در داخل شهرها در کشور خودمون از جمله تهران خب پیش اومده بود تو فتنه 88 اون سالها اینها کوله باری از تجربه بسیار ارزشمند بود که کشور سوریه در این مشکلی که براش وجود داشت بود به شدت تشنه این جور تجربیات و و توانمندی بود خیلی تلاش کرد واقعا باید اینجوری بگیم که اگر سردار حمدانی و این توانمندی‌هاش و این تجربه‌ش و اینها نبود اون مشکلی که حدود سه سال پیش برای دمشق پیش اومد و معارضین در دمشق تا نزدیک کاخ‌های بشار اسد پیش رفته بودند اگه این تجربیات نبود و از همون جا سازماندهی مردمی شروع شد حالا موافقت حاکمیت در سوریه با سازماندهی نیروهای مردمی آغاز شد از اونجا ایفای نقش شهید حمدانی در سوریه کاملا برجسته بود خب این نیروهای مردمی و سازماندهی نیروهای مردمی تجربه بود که در ایران ما انجام داده بودیم در لبنان انجام شده بود و این تجربیات وجود داشت منتها آقای بشار اسد به دلیل ملاحظاتی تا اون ماجرای دمشق که پیش اومده سال پیش مخالفت کرده بودن مخالف بودن ولی به هر حال سردار حمدانی برای جا انداختن این نقش در حاکمیت سوریه و بشار اسد خیلی تعیین کننده بود نقش ایشون که این رو جا بندازن که این کار تنها راه نجات سوریه این هست و این الحمدلله جا افتاد و با پذیرش این و موافقت با این خب سازمانده ای که انجام گرفت و الان نزدیک 56 هزار نزدیک 100 هزار نیروی مردمی سازماندهی شدن و به کمک ارتش اومدن در سوریه این سردار حمدانی در واقع بنیان این رو پایگذاری این رو تو سوریه ایشون انجام Hamedani himself explained his role in creating NDF and disclosed that Bashar Assad was initially unwilling to accept the creation of NDF because he feared that this new military force could undermine his authority. But in late 2011, when Assad witnessed the rebel groups advancing, fearing the imminent collapse of his regime, he accepted the Iranian offer. Iran undertook all financial costs of NDF when it was created in 2011 and provided the training of its recruits. Although Halal Assad, Assad's cousin, became the first official commander of NDF, he was killed by rebel groups in March 2014. Currently, NDF recruits are trained by Iranian Revolutionary Guards and Hezbollah, and many of them are sent to Iran for further military and ideological training. Ismail Khaydari, a high-ranking commander of Quds forces in Syria, before being killed in 2014 by a rebel group, explained during this 2013 interview how NDF recruits are trained in Iran. Amalan jebhe ki alam adonim mujangim jebhe ye, masan begim, farz doulat e Suriye dar mukabil mardom Suriye as na chini chizi nis. Yani khali ad mardom am in etqad adalan ki jebhe ye al ani Suriye jebhe ye Islam dar mukabil kofre, jebhe ye hak dar mukabil baatile. Chare ki ma 
عقیده مونه که جبهه اینور حقا به این جهت که جبهه اینور مدافعش حضرت آقاست جبهه اینور مدافعش سید حسن اصولاد جبهه اینور بچه ایران هستن حزب الله هستش مجاهدین عراقی هستن و جاهای دیگه مجاهدین افغانی هستن اینا اومدن جبهه اونور کیه اسرائیل جبهه اونور کیه عربستان هست جبهه اونور کیه ترکیه هست جبهه اونور کیه قطر پولهای اماراتی هستش که میاد امریکا هست انگلیس هست فرانسه و کشورهای اروپایی که با اینا یعنی نیروهای دفاع وطنی که ما هستن دیگه حد اکثر 25 روز با ما هستن جابجا میشن که این خودش بازی مزیت است برای نیروهایی که توی منطقه خیلی استقرار نداشته باشن هرچند خیلی از این دوستان که الحمدلله ما با اینا کار میکنیم قبلش آموزیده خود ما هستن تو ایران آموزش ما یعنی چون ما رو میشناسن خیلی راحت تر با ما کار میکنن و با رویات ما آشنا هستن NDF is estimated to have some 50,000 fighters deployed in the area controlled by the Syrian regime alongside Hezbollah forces and Shiite militias from Iraq NDF has played a pivotal role in saving the Syrian regime These Iranian-sponsored forces, along with the Syrian army, have participated in the large-scale massacre of the Syrian people. They have used chemical weapons and barrel bombs against civilians. They have nearly destroyed the country and have created a fertile environment for the creation and growth of radical Sunni groups. As a result, Syria has become engulfed in this deepening civil war that could eventually turn into a regional or even far wider disaster.